synonym rules, just like grammar used to make. So see, he's even got like the t-shirt thing. We got a little, the Catalina wine mixer on mine here. Prestige Worldwide's right on there, you know? See, he's man. Ricky Bobby and you're Ricky Bobby's dad? Oh, if he's Ricky Bobby, I am definitely Cal Norton. Is that what you're raising a your kid is, is your best friend? Sh- no, he's, sh- he's, I will always come second. I will always take the loss to make sure that he wins. So, yes, that is a great example. He can be Ricky Bobby, and I can be, um, I can be Cal Norton. We can do the slingshot. We could be El Diablo and the Magic Man. Chicken bait. Hey, Luca Nation, we Chicken are bait. back. And today <laughs> we had a really interesting discussion with Cage where Cage said, Oh, here we go. Using my words against me. So we were talking about Kobe. Mm-hmm. And Cage said Kobe oh. passing away took him from top 25 player of all time to mm-hmm. top five player of all time. To which he followed up with like Tupac. Like well, Tupac. Let's give some give some some reason why we didn't just pull this out of thin air or ass. There you made a statement. That some hip hop artist that no one had ever heard of before yes. passed away, and all of a sudden he's the greatest to ever do it. And why do we do this? Was the question you asked. Why do we like? Why do we put these guys up on a pedestal that weren't anything great? That you now they're immortalized. And I tried to give you two of the like most high profile examples, not of guys who were nobodies, but whose I, I don't want to say stock rose but who were put up on a much more of a pedestal because of their untimely demise. That's just what people do, you know? And, and to say Kobe was a top 25 all-time player, you took offense to because he was always a top 10, is what you say. I think people now hold him in a special, like, a different regard. So with the price, he sold with the stuff. But then, and then, then you yeah, went to Pac. And Biggie. And I, what I said was they were much more popular after they passed away, which nobody can deny. Which, Which nobody, nobody can, can deny. deny. <laughs> we've, we've been doing this for too long if we have the same jokes. <laughs> Luca Nation, anyway, back with another episode. We love you guys. We miss you. Thank you for the amazing Dude, feedback today. Is, I, we, I love the nation. I want to do more. I, wanna I do more. don't usually get this many compliments like ever in like a whole year combined. So thank you guys for all the support. Cage, I'll popcorn it to you, man. You've been in the city all day. We talked a What's bunch. That? Anything – yeah, you know what I did when I first got home? Sure, I celebrated sure. the expansion of the network. I had Cajun food for dinner. I <laughs> ordered it on my way home. The whole family just ate. You had, oh, we had like a, a Cajun boil with some crab legs. We had some lobster, a little bit of like a jambalaya type stuff with a little sausage. What in. was the tastiest? What did you like the most? All of it because it all comes in this awesome like Creole garlic butter flavor. It doesn't matter if you're eating a potato, a piece of corn. You know, I love corn. I love corn, corn. I love it, and uh, or lobster or crab legs. Crab legs. I will say this about crab legs: there are a lot I'm of big James Winston. Of, you know what crab legs remind me of? They remind me of the difference between so like lobster and crab legs. Remind me of the difference between making two hundred dollars by buying a hundred raw cards and like flipping them over and over and over again versus buying one two hundred dollar card and selling it for four hundred bucks. But that's there's a lot of work that goes into it. You got to get your hands dirty. You got to like break them. Yeah, it's like it's a the metal thing, right? Yeah, it's not that much payoff for it. I mean, I like it and all, but you know, I mean, the snob in me says just get the lobster. High but, school, we would always do Hong Kong King buffet. If any of you guys are from the East Coast, like all you could eat sushi and then uh, all you could eat Chinese food, and they would have those like crab. Le- uh, is it crab? I'm le- sure, le- this will come as no surprise to you, but I have been kicked out of Chinese buffet because you ate too much. Correct. Yes. And this is true. My wife is here laughing as she watches record this. She, she's seen it. She also saw me. She was there that you took her on a date. All of, well, we had been dating for a while. I was there with my, my brother and, you know, and, and the two of us eat a lot. We actually ate all of the food off of their dessert bar. And we said, well, you know, the guy came over and he's like, are you done? We said, no, we want more dessert. And you have none. And they actually went out and bought Entenmann's cakes and gave us Entenmann's cakes to eat because it's supposed to be all you can eat. No, no, stop. You're saying we. Who, who yeah. are the other? Who are the accomplices? My brother and myself. And you a larger just... version of me. 
This was Yom Kippur right around this time of the year. No, you, Yom Kippur. You're breaking fast. Yom Kippur is when you eat Chinese food. You have no, roast no, pork lo mein breaking, during Yom Kippur. Why were you no, so no, during when, you, when people are fasting, I eat roast pork lo mein. What are you talking about? Why are you so hungry? I'm always hungry. I'm hungry now. I just ate all the food I told you about I could eat again. I am never not hungry. There's a double negative there, but you understand what I'm saying. I'm always hungry. That's why I drink eight liters of soda a day to trick myself into thinking my stomach's full. But it's not. It's just full of soda. Well, if I'm you're always hungry, hungry, dude, you're hungry. Let's say hypothetically, I give you twenty k, twenty k, and I say go eat, go feast 20, on some yes. deals this week after the NFL Sunday. Oh yeah. Who are you buying? And who are you selling? Whoo! I'm buying Joe Burrow. If anybody's, if anybody panics after one week, you know, you give me the whole list of young quarterbacks. Mr. Burrow's done more. He's the one who actually won an AFC Championship game. He's a college champ. Right, he smokes a cigar, which you know, with the tiger hat, got a little cigar. So I give him a little credit there. Mr. Burrow is the one who has come back from adversity already after he had that knee injury. He's the one who can show you he could do it. But that said, only if people are discount over it, only if you have that week one overreaction. And we could spend probably 10 minutes during this episode just talking about week one overreaction, what your thoughts are on it as far as like psychology and the whole deal. But that's my quarterback buy. Um, Russell Wilson he, he put lost. him in a position to win, even with all of that. He, all they of should it. have won. Yeah, they should have won. They should have won the game multiple times, right? I mean, a missed extra point. The long snapper is a new long snapper. The original long snapper was injured. I mean, they, they should have won that game in regulation. Should have won the game in overtime. Give the Steelers credit, uh, Tony Harley. I'm not trying to crap on you, Steelers. Congratulations, being one and zero. But um, you know, I give Tony a shout out because he messaged me today and said it's awesome to uh, bring in Cajun onto the network but you know tony he has to have watched or listened to all of the content on the yeah. network so he's got to go back and listen to 184 episodes of cajun now he's the marathon man he wants he wanted me to guess how long it's gonna take i told him he doesn't have to do that just listen going forward if you like but it's you all good today, you know what today my like light bulb if there was like a little like graphic here was is there's like this whole concept i said this to you viewers mm-hmm. versus fans mm-hmm. we don't have the most instagram followers like let's be real and our show doesn't actually get the most views. But we're not we on, have fans that What's it called? The with, Dinger? We're not on the Dinger? We have fans that will literally go back and listen to every single episode. Yeah. So, like, that – it's hard. We like quantifying things, but, like, it's hard to quantify that. But, like, those messages, they really hit me. That, that was cool. We and, got a lot and, of um, messages. Every single one of those, like, I feel a, a mutual connection. Where we know their families, you know, we tr- we know what's going on in their lives. If they're starting a new job, if they got promoted, if they moved somewhere, if there's health things, we kind of, as we've developed this network, we've become like these virtual friends with our community, uh, where we're emotionally invested in their lives, and that was cool because it's not we can't always see that, you know, that doesn't always hit the bottom line, that doesn't get captured in the KPIs. It only gets captured when there's these like, like these announcements you make as a business, as a podcast, as whatever it is, to, you get a pulse, you get a, you get a flavor of have what we've been doing working. Do people appreciate it? Or is it in one ear out the other? So I'll tell you what my favorite thing was, and I will get back to who I, I'd buy this week. My favorite thing was the amount of people shooting their shot. The amount of people saying, Oh, now that you're expanding. I thought Julie's right there. watching. What about me? You what don't about need me? To tell her about all your DMs. There's different sliding at the DMs. There's a different account for that. Okay. I'm talking about on the podcast page, not on the one that nobody knows about. Come on now. You know what I'm doing. Your fence. But- Cage has a fence. Exactly. It's, called- it's my pseudonym. It's it's my pseudonym. Cage, Cage Ian's authentication network. Send, I go on photos the and I'll authenticate them. Of Buckminster Fuller. That's my pseudonym, just in case you know anybody's looking for it. So 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 yeah, I mean people come hey. You know, this is what I do. Here's some of the content I made. You know, what about me? Take a <laughs> We're answering all of you. And I expect many more. So that's number one. Well, the reality creating content's hard. And mm-hmm. and it's hard in a few ways. Like it's it's hard to get like for me it was really hard because you're like if people listen to me. Well, they like what I have to say. My voice sounds terrible. All that shit that goes through your head. So there's that component. And then if you overcome that. There's like the technological hurdle of like, how do I get my voice into that on the line? How do I get my voice on and then how the do line? I, how do I create content and how do I clip it and how do I add an intro? How do I? So well, you our know goal, how? you find an answer. Well, our goal is to <laughs> you do what you do great 
and let us take care of all of the background stuff because specialization matters, right? When you get really good at something, you do it every single day. So you don't have to worry about all that stuff. And that's the goal with our network. We'll handle the production. You do what you do best. Almost it ridiculous. Be value driven too. Oh yeah. Well, because what's the point of doing it? Right? What's the point of doing it if there's no value? Um, make money, bring value. Make more money, bring more value. Which, by the way, we're working on three cigar nights for you mother effers next year. I mean, oh, maybe it's this easy. year. Four, including national, and one, one definitely this year. Maybe more. Like Tiger NFTs, man. We told you it was not. Food, it was not open a bar, little gift goodie boxes, and hopefully, if we could do it, an athlete or a celebrity, like someone nostalgic from the '80s and '90s. Pops or off. just Andrew Andrew's parents. Dude. That's a celebrity to me. You bring Papa Papa Andrew, Papa Goldberg. I mean, he probably won't smoke a cigar, but he could tell some stories. He could tell Luga Nation fans about how Andrew was as a kid. He could tell the story about that time you burned the house down. Oh, sh- I'll let you let your dad tell that for at the NFT event. It'll be Dude, a good time. It's something like that almost happened. So, like in my uh, eighteen, I was kind of rebellious. Dude, don't ruin the story. <laughs> And we went on vacation, and we would go to vac- Mexico every single year. You guys know that. And to my high school buddy, he like hit me up. He was like, "Hey, I got this date. I don't, I don't, I don't know where to take her. Like, my parents are home. They're supposed to leave. Like, can I use take your it house? To the zoo. Take it to the zoo. And I was like, "Yeah, sure. Here's the garage code." So I gave him the garage code. He brings a date. Anyway, I fo- we find out from our neighbor. They're like, "Hey, are you guys back from vacation? Like, why did the car move?" Um, I was like. Oh, and my mom asked her, like, I was like, I gave Bobby the the garage code. So he threw a party at our house. They took the car and someone broke um, the wall, punched through the wall. Yeah. So and when we got back, Still my, my dad Bobby? got in the fight. Well, he was that. two years younger, man. He's a good kid. He just misguided. You still know Bobby or no? I, I, we haven't talked in a minute, but I, I'd welcome him to all. He's good people, man. All right, Bobby. If, All you our high, if our high school friends, Jimmy, Tim, come are on, watching. Jimmy, Timmy, Jimmy, Timmy, Jimmy, Jimmy, you guys. We're going to bring on the Arena Club tomorrow. Stay tuned for that. Um, there's been a lot of news about kind of what they are. Are they a grading company? Are they an online marketplace? Are they a digital marketplace? Uh, we're going to have Brian and Warren on from their team. You're going to hear it right from them. Uh, and it's pretty cool. I got a chance to meet with them on like a pre call. And just kind of learn what they're all about and the entire call. And you get a good feeling about who you're who you're going to have on the show during the pre-call. They only want to talk about cards. And I found out they're collectors. They've been in this space for 20 years. So, guys, stay tuned. Tomorrow we're recording with the Arena Club. It will be up tomorrow or Thursday. Um, but it's going to be an awesome interview, learning more about kind of why they even started it, um, what the value is for all the people out there who are collectors. I'm excited to have a conversation with Brian and Warren from the Arena Club uh, tomorrow. So stay tuned for that, guys. I got two topics for you. Rock out. I- I'm okay. ready to go. I'm warmed One, up. We're going to talk about the continue the overreaction, yeah. sales, you name it, the whole deal, and lessons learned on that. But before we get into that, maybe we can end with that. Um, rumors, news, innuendo. Uh, Obviously, it's all over the place, but clearly it's out there in the hobby. And I'm not going to mute myself, but I am going to not talk. And I want to hear you riff on this because you posted a really cool story about like, hey, you know, don't believe it unless it's coming from a real place. And I know we have a goal of becoming a trusted network, a trusted news. So I think we already are, you know, trusted in the hobby. But like one of those things you said in the story, kind of like, you know, if it comes from us, you know, it's going to be true because we're going to check our sources. We're not going to put it out there. If it's something we're not sure of, we'll say it's something we're not sure of. It's just opinion. Not everyone does that. So this is where I shut up. And we're here. So first off, Fanatics isn't buying Panini. It's just not today. They're not. But but we're recording this today. What do you mean? No, I mean, so – when you say Fanatics isn't buying Panini, it sounds the, the like you're saying really, the news right. that was released is not true. Okay, so that's because when you say Fanatics isn't buying Panini, people read that and they're like, "Ever?" You know what I mean? Like you're so. I, this is one of those like, "Hey, leave Lawyers. me alone," because because English Lawyers. is my English is not my first language. Like, like I'm uh, I'm not saying in a bad way, but you, Panini did not yet buy. No. Panini was not yet bought by Fanatics. Fanatics has not bought Panini. That news has not come out. That is not released. Anybody who's saying it's happened is 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 peddling rumor and innuendo. That said, from now until the end of time, 
Panini may be purchased by Fanatics or somebody else. So when you say Fanatics isn't buying Panini, today, this week, it hasn't happened yet. Fana- How about Fanatics has not yet bought Panini? I need to go to Anchorman School. <laughs> it's, Stay classy. It's, as we grow, the, <laughs> the, the, the exact format of the words is important. I, I'm a truth seeker. So the wording, I'm not, never going to be good at it. Actually, I'm pretty terrible at it if you guys could have picked up anything. But like I'm a tr- I love finding the truth. So no, that's unreliable. And guys, at the end of the day, what is this media outlet? It's relationships we have with people who are running businesses in the hobby. And we want to bring you guys news and value through those relationships. It's really not like rocket science. And when we talk to people, it takes time to build relationships. You can't rush it. But when they trust you, they trust you. So if you don't hear the news from us, more than likely, it's not true. But even forget that and forget us. Look at who is delivering the rumors. These are the same exact rumors that were floated six weeks ago by the same troll accounts. And I, 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 I can't lie. I think they do a fantastic job at it. They, they have, they have fans. Um, but yes, at this moment in time, on September thirteenth, we're really recording this late because Cage has a big boy job. <laughs> at eight fifty three p.m., Fanatics isn't buying Fanini, uh, and Luper isn't leaving the company. At this current time. At this current time. time. <laughs> Caveat. Yeah, you're hilarious. I don't know why you do that. No, it's but, um, well, why? Because you put that in your story and you got responses from people who we know in the hobby saying it could still happen. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So when you make a statement like in the story it says Fanatics isn't buying Panini, people's in- initial response is Ever like uh, that? That's that's why. That's I'm not trying to like you know catch you on anything like that. But yes, when you say fanatics isn't buying Panini, but th- that's that's a wide thing. It's like I'm not eating burgers. Okay, that's because tonight I ate Cajun food. But at some point in time, I probably will eat burgers again. P- people will respond to that like ever. You know, like it, it's missing. Uh, it's missing the uh, you know the end of it. So I'm not eating burgers tonight. I'm not eating burgers for dinner tonight. We have two lawyers on the network. Yeah, you're in trouble. So, so listen, guys, I guess the, the, the point there is this happens not just in the hobby. It happens all over the place. And Andrew is not having it. Andrew's not standing for it. It happens when the market is down. It happens when the news cycle is crazy. It happens when people are losing money. It happens when things are not so happy-go-lucky. All of the headlines are almost clickbaity. They're all, you know, sensational. They're all, oh, what was me? You know, one of the best-selling newspapers, rags, you know, they used to actually print the news when I was a child, was the National Enquirer because the headlines are crazy. And, you know, you, know, you, you, you want to stop reading the regular newspaper talking about stock market crashes and how your assets are worth less. Instead, you pick up the one that talks about how the alien had eight children with this farmer. You know, I mean, like, you know, that's that's kind of the way that it works, right? So, so it's the same kind of thing here, right? Nobody wants to hear about another company coming in. Nobody wants to hear about another company going out. Nobody wants to hear about the prices going down. You know, instead, it's very easy to click on the oh, breaking news, breaking news. Andrew has four eyes. No, I want to. I want to click be, on it. I want us to be early days Sports Illustrated and ESPN. Where you guys come on, it's entertaining. You forget, you relax and enjoy it, but it, it's fully credible. It's the anchors, the talent. You know that they're telling you the truth, and you love them. That's what I want us to be. I don't go. want us to be drama and gossipy. That shit's well. That's speaking lit. of, that's lame. I, I'm gonna lead this fish to water. All right, because we love our I'm audience. Thirsty. I've had a lot of coffee. Today. We love our audience. Um, we're in a group chat with. A lot of people, slab stocks is one of them, right? And you want to be credible and you want to be an adult. You want to be the old man network ESPN before they got stupid and got, you know, these talking heads on it now that'll just say anything yeah. for, you know, for advertisements. And, um, you know, sometimes we make assumptions. Sometimes I shoot off, you know, I shoot from the hip. You know, I, 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 I say things that are not they awfully me, crafted. They call me Shooter McGoldberg. <laughs> Shoot him at Goldberg. Bam, bam, bam. No, so, S- S- Slab Stocks uh, heard my comments or someone forwarded to him. And uh, my comments about the Carlos Alcaraz cards that were released. And then he posted a graphic that they were up like 160%. And I was under the impression that him or people he knew were buying the cards. 
he reached out. He said nobody at Slab Stocks was buying those cards. Uh, so I apologize to him for speaking out of turn for him posting JV as content. I <laughs> you, think that you should know better than to prey on people who <laughs> don't know better. So I'll give you guys the gist. Oh, oh These gosh. cards are not even pack ripped. That's so not- they come. They come like the same way you'd buy like nice teacups mm-hmm. on, on Amazon. Yes, so you yes. would buy the cards. They sold out instantly. And then like over two weeks, he won two U.S. Open matches and the price skyrocketed. Mm-hmm. But let's use some like reasoning that you're not your first day in the hobby. This was probably bought by a small group of people who are hoarding the supply and slowly going to liquidate into this news. Or more importantly, people who did not buy it for the intent of selling it because they love Carlos Alcaraz like people who collect and create an actual demand for it, they probably bought it saying, if I can get this, I'm going to be able to flip it. I'm going to be able to right. j- j- drop it on somebody else. Now, just for clarity's sake, he's not saying slab stocks did this. As a matter of fact, because sometimes when you print something and you know a retraction is necessary, slab stocks specifically reached out to us and said that he didn't buy any. So we want to make sure that that's clear. Slab stocks did not buy this stuff. He did, however... Put some content out about it. Proceed. Yeah, and and uh, for content creators, especially ones that I think are respected, I think it's not enough to just put out content. I think you have to think about the implications of your content and who you're speaking with. So when you're just like, hey, this card is up 160%, but at the same time, you are an experienced hobby vet and you don't add any color or context, People who are young or newer entrants in the hobby are just be like, I'm going to go buy that card. It's clearly going up. He's going to win. It's going to go up again. And they're going to lose their shirt on a card that wasn't pack ripped, that was bought online. Mass quantities are held by flippers. So the supply is very low. The demand has increased. The price is artificially inflated. And then they're going to slowly dump it on people who are chasing the next flip. Uh, it's the – you guys know the, the – it's the, the theory we quote all the time. Lesser fool? Yeah. Greater, greater fool? fool? Greater fool theory. So this so, fool who's the, as foolish as me? And there's a guy named Super Trout who put out a, a, a post showing a Pete Sampras card. Like, Apple that was a good Apple, post. The exact same card. is like 800 bucks. buy it now or best offer. No one's even nibbling at that card. That's the, the kind of thing we say all the time though, right? Like, you know, Justin Herbert or any of these guys would sign up right now for Peyton Manning's career. But Peyton Manning's cards are less. You know, I mean, it's, it's reckless, it's, lazy content, and that's my problem. If, does he own the cards? For sure. Now no. you're going after <laughs> reckless. Oh no, you're using reckless as a word there. Okay, I understand. Hey, this is up 160. percent What do you think? I mean, what do you think? You're the experts. Well, listen. <laughs> I just thought it was important to not have rumored innuendo out there, and we did get a message saying that you know that it looked like we were saying that it was purchased by them and they wanted to make sure they didn't purchase it. We are nothing if not, you know, trying to be as honest as we can over here. We're, we're, you know, we're a verbal vlog, basically. If, because if, we don't have the capacity to do the video vlog. It's a verbal vlog. This is what's happening in my life day to day. There you go. Verbal blog. Blog, vlog, <laughs> video log. Put it on the line. Next, overreactions of week one. Can I ask you a question about this? Sure. You are a big Jamar Chase fan. And the folks who have made it through the first 20, 25 minutes of this episode, I'll never know how many there are um, because now I'm just burping up crab legs. Um, Yeah. Anyway, so so you are a Jamar Chase fan. I love Jamar Chase. And leading up into the season, you were going to start buying – now, guys, pay attention here, okay? Lessons, Andrew and I. Senpai yeah. and Kohai here, okay? Senpai and Kohai. Apple pie, all of it. It's <laughs> – he tells me he wants to buy Jamar Chase cards. Do you yeah. remember what I told you? Buy Jamar Jefferson is what he said. But Justin Jefferson, yeah. Je- Je- Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson. So, guys, first Because of all, he's one quarter of the price. Well, uh, it's late at night, so you guys are getting a different version of Andrew. usually record earlier in the day. I'm in sleep by like 9 p.m. Just so you guys know. <laughs> yeah, I'm making him, uh, I'm making him stay awake. So just so you guys know that. Uh, Sorry, late day work. I said I want to buy Jamar Chase. Cage is like, that's stupid. He's expensive. <laughs> you should buy Justin Jefferson. And and the point is, what I learned this weekend 
even though they had very similar games. I know he had two touchdowns, but it's expectations, right? So, and how expectations are priced into cards. So, watching Jamar Chase all summer long trade up probably three or four X the same exact Justin Jefferson card. Me wanting, I'm like, Jamar is going to have this incredible season. But now as it's playing out, you realize that's already priced in where Justin Jefferson, you're getting him with the same upside potential, but a lower expectation baked in. So that's how I worded it. How do you see it? Because, and I'm like, forget the player. It's the expectations versus upside potential. It's harder to be a flipper on guys who everybody else is trying to flip. That's well, what I'll say. Be more specific than everybody else because it's harder to well, know everyone. But you, well, it's supply and demand, right? So so you know what everyone else is going for because the Jamar Chase card ran leading up to the season and the Justin Jefferson card didn't. Oh, crawl. It, it went up, right? And what you need to have is you need to have a lights out, slam dunk kind of game, a Josh Allen type of performance taking out the Super Bowl champs week one for that 30% increase to become a 40% increase. You know what I mean? Even that, even, you know, even, hey, I beat the Rams because Josh Allen's stuff ran, right? Jamar Chase's stuff ran. Justin Herbert's stuff ran, right? Mahomes' stuff didn't run as much. And that's why you saw a lot of people running to buy Mahomes after week one because it's five touchdowns, no interceptions. He didn't miss a beat. Now, by that same logic, mm -hmm. Is Lillard the guy to buy then? No, because there is a window of time of where you can prospect on someone, invest in someone who still has a significant amount of upside. And when that upside has become already happened. So Lillard's, Lillard's played over a decade already. Very different scenario. Who, Very is different the, scenario. who is the Justin Jefferson of either baseball or football? Dude, or Justin, Justin Jefferson's in his third year. So like a Garland? But Garland ja. Has, but Ja's run. I mean, so so an example, I guess, if you're a believer in – I mean, I can't even do this. I La can't Mello? give you a Ja. No, LaMelo? because – No, because LaMelo's prices were high. Jefferson's prices were high. It's difficult because in basketball and football, football, it's a quarterback type of thing, right? And that's part of the reason that, you know, these guys' prices don't run is because people don't really look at – you know, they don't look at anything outside of a, of a QB except for Jamar Chase because he was amazing and he got to break every record and blah, blah, blah. Um, but basketball is tough, man. It, you know, it's, it's – I mean, you'd have to have somebody who has, who has great stats and is just being overlooked. You know, I, I – I, I can't even come up with somebody who is, Pardon? you know, young enough. And no, because he's been there that long. You have to be somebody from like 18 on. You know what I, I have mean? a theory, guys. I think this is the year. The Sixers Trae Young? get the one or two. I'm going to actually go this. The Sixers are going to get the one seed in the East, and Embiid's going to be the MVP this season. The, the Sixers have made some really sneaky moves this offseason that have rounded out their roster and taken a lot of pressure off Embiid. Embiid is just going to be asked to score. Guard the rim. Score, guard the rim. You have Montrez Harrell there now. You have P.J. Tucker, and you have DeAnthony Melton. Three huge pickups. Three really serviceable role players. I am I'm very much starting to look into Embiid. I think his cards for his talent hasn't been priced in, and I think swap him out. He is Jokic. Him and, him, him and Jokic were neck and neck, and he could have even won it last year, but he hasn't had the same card run up. I know he's not three years. I know he's seven years. We have a lot of basketball people, so think about this. Would you would you be reacting if Luca came out and started off slow for five games? Luca's is in his own remarkable world. Luca has more highlights in like a four year career than most players have in a. Work with me, man. No. Yes. Okay. So that is the NFL Week One. It is one seventeenth of the season. Right, I know it's more than one game in an 82-game basketball season, right? But it's basically like five games, maybe a little less than five games. All right, it's not 10% of the season; it's a little more than 5% of the season. Overreactions abound. Yes, people might be dumping Russell Wilson cards because he lost right. by one point, not his fault. Field goal kicker missed the field goal. 
Why people would that? Why, why not let Russ throw on fourth and five? That's why you brought uh, him, right? So many things. So many. They could have gone for it in the drive before that when they were down by six instead of going for a field goal. There so many, so many things. I, By the same token, we'll stick in the same game. Don't. I mean, Geno Smith cards. You're going to be overpaying for Geno Smith after one week where, you know, he looked, you know, decent. You know, he looked like he could manage a team. That team's not doing anything this year. So be careful, right, with the overreactions on things, both sides, to the upside, to the downside. Um, and I our, guess our you're... community is not buying Geno Smith. Let's be serious. We're, we're sophisticated buyers here. Okay. So, I mean, if you're listening and you're thinking, wow, maybe I should buy some Geno Smith, you might be able to buy a really nice Geno Smith for cheap. Leave but... it in the comments. I'll guarantee you we get zero comments that someone's buying a Geno Smith from our community. All right. No way. You can no buy way. a night. You can buy a nice Geno Smith product too. Yes, but the point is, you can overreact to the upside. Let's hope you guys aren't buying it. I will play this again in in th- twenty five weeks when Geno Smith has won the Super Bowl MVP, <laughs> and people are like, "Whoa, you told us not to buy him." That would be fantastic. Seattle's going to be a mess, but they managed to beat Russell Wilson. Um, that was Seattle Super Bowl, guys. They they were up yeah. as much as you can be for that one. I mean, it, you know, and and they were lucky to escape with that one. But a lot, it's week one. Lots of overreaction. The Aaron Rodgers thing. Um, we know. call him Ayahuasca Aaron now, Gage. There you go. Ayahuasca. You go. Gee, right? Up his nose kind of thing, right? No. Oh, no. I, you eat a toad. Oh, you eat a toad. I was talking about like that butter thing that he did. You know, the diet that he did. He did like a whole thing. That's not what Ayahuasca is. Ayahuasca go to like Peru. I know what that is. No, like, no. like a frog's ass. I know. It's funny stuff. Ew. I get it. Yeah, I get it. It's you fine. haven't traveled, huh? You're not a big traveler. Like Disney World's as far as you go. I mean, they don't, I've have, been, they don't have ayahuasca ceremonies in Epcot, right? It's I've not like been, Peru. You pull pull up to a right, like they you go in the back and they have like an ayahuasca ceremony. Do you know the what which Indians were in Peru? The Aztecs. Like, the Incas. Incas. Incas, Incas <laughs> hey, Incas. you did it! It only took you two guesses. There really are only three you could probably guess from. Okay, <laughs> Aztecs, <laughs> Incas, and Mayans, it. yeah. And they built Mount Machu Picchu. Yeah. Uh, Mount Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu. Exactly yeah. right. Look I'm at you, man. I'm a cultured guy. I've I traveled the world. I've, I've met people from like... You know my stance on this. Four countries. If... That's not true. More than that. We have we have 136 countries listen to this last I checked. Kind of cool. So that's, you know, that's pretty amazing in and of itself. But you know my stance. If a country is good enough, they will put it in Epcot. And if it's not good enough, to literally, they will move. America yeah. will buy it like the Louisiana Purchase. <laughs> we Louisiana purchased Cajun cardboard. If you don't make the cut, We're you at least will go there for food and wine. They'll add you, and they'll you'll make the cut for their food and wine. You know, like Poland. You don't make it on the every day, but for a special festival, they'll they'll bring you in. Um, yeah, man. So overreactions we got. We killed that one. Uh, I performed miserably this week. So there's another overreaction. Don't worry about that. My props were 500, but my picks, whew, so many late scores. Oh, how about Trey Lance? We'll think make him dance. What do you think about that? Well, the, I the, told the, you what it, what it should be after week the one. Pedal bowl, the Trey pedal Lance bowl. will shit I his pants. <laughs> I, I don't think you could judge by that game, to be quite yeah. honest. I'm not a big Lance homer. I have one Lance card, um, but I don't, I don't think you could judge by the puddle game. I will say – I think the Patriots are going to struggle to score. I think they're going to be the lowest scoring offense in the league this year. Dude, Mac Jones just, he doesn't have an arm. He's not electric and he doesn't have a lot of talent. And the scheme is very conservative. Like that's a lot of headwinds to just, it's hard enough to score in the NFL. You know what I mean? I love it. Listen, the NFL is fun. Cards are fun. And two different points to make there. And we could take it wherever you like from there. We'll just wrap it up. Um, and, you know, get prepared for our arena club tomorrow. One, football is fun. They don't give you any time. Everybody loves Herbert. He avenged his loss to the Raiders. Everybody loves Mahomes. He had his five touchdowns and obviously didn't miss Tyreek Hill. In two days, less than 48 hours from recording this, they play each other. You know, rock in a hard place. You know, something's got to give. One of those two guys will be a 500 quarterback. One of those guys will be one and one. Uh, you can't go out of there 2-0. Oh. This is what we were talking about when we talk about which, who to invest in, blah, blah, blah. You know, they, they play each other often. You know, they continue to play each other. So that's awesome. NFL, 
you know, it gives you another chance to get right back in it. But talk about that great game. And anybody, listen, um, Rick Probstein has a great piece of content out. He put it out this morning. I should tell you all you need to know about eBay. Not one of our sponsors. And likely won't ever be. Because my rants about them will live in infamy forever. But Rick Probe's team went on did a video this morning, sort of like a bad eBayer, you know, like the bad card buyer who I'm going to block, right? And the message was, yo, Probes, or something like that, you know, like, you know, like, like he knows who he is. He says, do me a favor and cancel all of my purchases on Joe Burrow and Trey Lance, but I still want my Mahomes and my Herbert buys, you know, like, <laughs> to the, you know, something like that. Right. And he went on to say like, no, this is, this is, we sell on eBay, not hedgeyourbets.com or something like that. It was a great, funny little, you know, snippet video, but it is exactly part of why you still can't do that whole like stock market. Cage is, the Cage's follow list is hilarious. Cage has a, he's a Peter Pacman fan and a pro Steve love, love them both. About the other ends of the spectrum, but they both have great content. I love Peter stuff's educational, man. He, Cage has personal God. He has a uh, card, uh, sports card investor. He, he's yep. he, yeah, I love personal God too. Yeah. I love Eddie. I love him. I love him. And and you really I really do love Eddie. Tell me who else I should follow. I mean, I only follow like six hundred people. I don't have that many followers myself. I'm 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 struggling to get to three thousand. It looks like five five fifty of those are Ziggy's Ziggy's accounts. <laughs> 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 we love Ziggy. You guys are talking again, which is nice. Yeah, that meant, I said an info about the Ethereum merge. It puts a smile on my face, which, you know, is causing Bitcoin. Dude, right I now. love everybody. I just like chatting shit, too. Like, part of what we do here is a little competitive. So, I'm like, my content's better than yours. I don't really wish anybody ill will. Some people are more sensitive than others, though. I got to tell you, man. The lion doesn't give a shit what the sheeps think. Lions can't really give shits. You know what I mean? Like, wow, you never worked in a zoo. Not only we used to go to Six Flags, huge. we used to go to Six Flags Safari in uh, in Jersey. <laughs> yeah, you used to take a banana, them. you know, like feed, try to feed them out of the car. Oh, yeah. man, <laughs> some of those, some of those got a little unruly. I don't know how they were able to get away with that. You know, they have monkeys all over the cars and stuff driving around. I remember that. That was fun stuff. Well, this episode has gone off the rails. The monkeys are uh, attacking the car. We're lighting the – what is it? Lighting the midnight oil? Is that what they say in like – They say that at midnight or even later sometimes. Usually it's not said at like a couple minutes after 9. But I know you have a different schedule than everybody else. 9.30 is ayahuasca time. So I, was I get it. watching the last dance. It's incredible how you could rewatch it. You watch what? Like, I'm rewatching oh, the, last the last dance. And you could rewatch it and you're like, Jordan's just different. Like I don't know. But I do think – I said this to Cage. I do think what we're seeing from Mahomes, we're seeing it right in front of our eyes. But, like, he already has accolades as good as, you know, Dan Marino, Brett Favre. Okay, he has an MVP, he has a Super Bowl. Got it. But his flair for the game, the way, like, that Jordan changed the league from sort of boring-ish – I don't want to say really boring, but, like, sort of – to what he was doing, tongue out, flair, dunk contest. Man – I do believe Mahomes is changing the, how the NFL is played. I hate when you say this, but I'll give you credit on one front. I did watch the last dance, and you know I watched Jordan when he was actually doing it um, and hated him because I was a Knicks fan at the time. And not anymore because I'm a fair weather fan and because no one should be tortured by being a Jet or a Knicks fan in life. It's just not a good thing. Um, but what I'll tell you is Jordan had that chip on his shoulder. You don't know why, right? I mean, the, here he is, a guy, you know, he created the chip sometimes. He's yeah. a high, high draft pick, you know, collegiate champ. You know, he shouldn't have had a chip on his shoulder, right? But he created, he made it, oh, wow, Portland's going to go out there and take Sam Bowie over me. That's it. I'm going to, and I took that personally. And George, I'm Carl, everyone, you know? George Carl walked by me at dinner and didn't say hi. Yeah, it's I mean, on so he had to, Mahomes, <laughs> in his interview, when they asked him, like, hey, you know, do you have something else to prove? You know, Tyreek's not here. Do you have something to prove? He's like, I always have something to prove. I played for Texas Tech. I wasn't highly thought of. I wasn't the first quarterback who was taken. They said I couldn't play in the NFL. And then when I came out, I was not even the starter. Like, he, he plays with that same type of, like, chip on his shoulder. And I'll tell you, again, week one, overreaction, no overreaction, you name it. The only Mahomes that I have any interest in whatsoever is the one that we own, like, $100 worth of shares in on our collectible portfolio. 
Um, so I'm not a Mahomes buyer. That may change at some point. If it does, I'll let you guys know. He I'm looked. A buyer. He looked confident, which is what you want out of your quarterback. There was no happy feet. There's no nothing. He looked out there like, like I wanted to see. Is he looking for Tyree Hill? No. no. No, he threw five touchdowns to four different receivers. Clyde Edwards Hilaire, there's a buy low candidate. I know you want to talk about overreacting. Two touchdowns to that guy all He's of a sudden. Incredible. He looked like you know the he player so that we thought he was gonna years. be at LSU, right? But here's the better part. I, I know listen, we, we try to come on and give you value. It's one of the things I I thought about and uh, you know, look, half of me I'm like, oh, I can go buy them all up myself before anybody else does. That's not what we do here, right? I have a thought, I want to share it with you guys. It's not a quarterback. So 90% of you will stop listening now, right? But for the 10% of you who don't, there may be a nice diamond in the rough from a collectible standpoint here if you stuck with us for the 40 minutes of this episode. Travis Kelsey may go down as the best tight end to ever play the game. Now, there have been some really good ones. Tony Gonzalez, collected by a lot of listeners of, uh, of our channel. <laughs> um, you know, Shannon Sharp, who's on television. Gronk. I think Kelsey, Gronk, I think Kelsey has a chance to break all of their records. And what's amazing about it is he's kind of quiet about it. You know what I mean? Like you don't hear like flamboyance out of him. It's not doing anything. But why would you buy Kelsey and not Mahomes? So I'm not saying buy one or the other or buy both. They're actually friends, like very good friends. They hang out, you know, the whole deal. So it's got that drunk Brady kind of like, I'm going to break the records. I'm going to make sure you get records with me. I'm going to make sure you get your bonuses. I'll make sure all that stuff. Why would I buy Kelsey and not um, Mahomes, for the same reason that I told you to buy Jefferson and not Jamar Chase, because no one's buying Kelsey. Don't wish that right evil now. upon me. Don't put and, that evil on me, Casey. No, but it may, it'll work out. He's, Chase is going to have an amazing season, right? He had great individual stats in a game where they lost, which, you know, sometimes works that way for wide receivers. He's going to have even better games going forward. And the chemistry that he has with uh, Joe Burrow, because they were in college together and, you know, came but, right but into why, Mahom- why Kelsey over Mahomes? And why, why would you not buy Mahomes? Because people – okay, a couple reasons. Number one, Mahomes has a lot of cards, so it's difficult to pick which one I would tell somebody to invest in. Rookie, RPA, you know, what brand, what you name it, the whole nine yards. So that's one. Two, even if I was able to isolate one, right, and it was a good card of Mahomes, approximately 99.8% of our audience – isn't buying into it because they can't afford it. Mahomes cards are expensive. Even his base slash silver prism rookie card is thousands upon thousands of dollars. And a lot okay. of our audience who's listening to this can't afford to just entry level get into a four thousand dollar. Yeah, but card. he has a he has a the rookies card. Right. It so now you it's supply and demand. Right? There's there is no shortage of supply and the rookies card will will struggle to have the demand when there's so many other options that are out there. Whereas Kelsey, he doesn't have as many cards as Mahomes because he's not Mahomes and his cards have not run. It also doesn't have the demand yet. There Dude, will come a time. We, we, ha- we were paying 1.1 mil for a Herbert shield. Mm-hmm. And if he wins MVP this year, that shield will, if it resold, it would either resell for the same amount or slightly more. Yeah. Mahomes, if he wins an MVP this year, we're going to put him in the all-time great category. So what? We're not talking about Mahomes or Herbert. What I'm talking about are different buying classes. Someone who buys Kelsey is not somebody who's going to look to sell it in a week, in a month, or even this season. They're going to buy it. And if Mahomes does well, Kelsey's probably had one hell of a season also. They're probably going to win another Super Bowl together if what you're talking about is right. He's adding to his accolades, and he probably plays a bunch more years, continues to compile stats. And then you're talking about somebody like Mr. Pujols, who all of a sudden people want to buy again. There is very little downside to someone like Kelsey because the cards have not run. There's very little barrier to entry. It just doesn't have the flash. It doesn't have the panache. It doesn't have the, wow, I'm, I got my homes. I got my home. I bought the Herbert. Yes, none of his cards will ever be million dollar cards, no matter what he does, right? It's not going to happen. Twenty dollar cards right now, but they're probably twenty dollar cards right now. So anyway, it's just something I'm thinking. Obviously, Andrew's shooting some holes in it, and they're all valid holes. 
but he speaks from a different type of collector than I am. And I know a lot of you are in yeah, this camp. Experience, a lot of you are, unless successful. No, no, no. <laughs> Part of, listen, let's, 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 let's call a spade a spade here, right? I mean, this is one of those things where we got into this because it's fun. We got into this for nostalgia. We got into this because we enjoy it. Sure, there's investment. There's money to be made. But I'm sure more people would have fun buying Mahomes and watching him score five touchdowns and being able to flex it and show it off and have all the likes and all the cool things on their page. You don't really get that with Kelsey. You know what I mean? You could say, look, I told you so. I bought this card for 10 bucks and it went to 20. Uh, Look, Kelsey had two touchdowns, but you're not going to get as many likes. You're not going to get the whole deal. So I understand that side. You don't typically buy cards that people like to show off. Mm, I like like to. One or two. Like you're you're, you're a very conservative guy. You know what I would say my favorite thing is to to be first. It's I want to buy cards that. People will show off. If you're not I, first, you're last. Like a, like, a, like a like a. And you take it back to the beginning of the episode, Ricky Bobby. If you ain't first, you're last. Uh...